So we have people talking about money and politics and how to change that and get people's votes to count and stuff, and that's all good that people are talking about it, but whoa, let's, let's take a step back first. And why do we need to take a step back? Well, it's quite simple. With this move to amend and the wolf pack and stuff, we have what is basically a nuclear option being pursued here for change. We have people going about this idea of let's take away the, all the constitutional rights from corporations and let's somehow get all the money out of politics and let's limit the amount people can contribute and all this stuff. And I do like the direction this discussion's taking, which is what can we do to fix this problem? However, however, it's a big one. This is way too much on the other side of this issue. Yes, we have a problem on this side, like with the bribery and corruption that's all over the place with corporations buying politicians and stuff, and it's pretty messed up. We can all look at Congress and see it happening. It's no debatable thing that we have a big issue with corruption. But I don't think the answer is to swing all the way on the other side and just say, well, they can't give any money and we're limiting everybody to like $2,000 or something and nobody can contribute money beyond this much and let's just slap down these regulations as hard as we can on it because it really it's become an emotional response where people are outraged by an issue and so they want something done, damn it. And the something they want done, damn it, like it is very often when people jump into an issue with their emotions running high, is an overreaction. It's too much. And again, this is not to say that there doesn't need to be something done. I fully agree with that. In fact, I think that we need to really be exploring and talking about all the things we could do to perhaps at least ameliorate the situation that our government finds itself in being bought by all different manner of powerful people. And a lot of people have that thought of, if we're going to do something about this, well, I'd rather this happen than do nothing at all. But that's a false dichotomy. Because it's not like there's only two answers to this problem. It's not like we either amend the Constitution or give everybody permission to be corrupt as they want. It's not that simple. There's a whole mess of nuance involved in this topic. Whole layered nuances, because let's, let's talk for a moment about drawing a line somewhere. You can only donate X amount of dollars, no matter how much money you make. Well, wherever you draw that line, you're going to run into the issue of people who, in a reasonable level, wish to give more. Well, what if it's 2000 They might want to give 5000 Is that really that much more unreasonable than 2000 Well, it gets iffy. And then you have to start talking to other people who have more money or groups that put their money together, you know, like individual people that put, pool their money together and then want to donate. It, there's a whole slew of things that get involved in this, and maybe you still say, well, just chop it to 2000 or whatever and let everybody else sort it out, but that's a very, very emotional reaction, I would think, to this. And quite simply, we don't solve problems with emotional, immediate, visceral reactions. It's, it only creates more problems. And I think, more importantly than just talking about the individual nuances of what these laws or amendments would do, is they're missing the real issue here, I think, which is cultural. We have a system that sort of allows this to go on. It's not that we're not outraged about it, that's not the truth, because we have all these discussions and movements going on, so there is outrage. The problem is, though, that people are trying to change legally that which is a cultural problem. And yes, you could perhaps come up with a much more reasonable legal answer to this that is well thought out and balanced, but the true core issue comes here not about some loophole in law, but about the fact that we have a culture that tolerates this on, a, on at least some kind of level. Sure, we're all outraged about it, and we want to do something about it, but are we doing that with our votes? Are we actually voting? this way or are we just voting for the Democrats or the Republicans because that's who we support based on something? Are we actually taking the steps to affect change within the system that matters? That's really where I think we should be. If you don't want candidates who are bribable, don't vote in candidates who are bribable. And yes, that's a tall order in a sense because you, how are you going to know, right? But when you have a candidate who is bribed, don't vote him back in. Because if you vote him back in, you are tacitly saying that you approve of his negative behavior. It's just that simple. 
oh, well, I believe in his other issues. Well, okay, then the other issues are then more important to you than the corruption. And that's fine. I'm not saying that you have to take that as your most important issue or whatever, but be aware of that. If you're voting in the politicians who take the money from the major corporations and who take all of these donations and then act based on that instead of the will of their constituents, well, somebody voted them in. And it wasn't just corporations who voted. It's the people who vote. So there are people approving of this behavior, or at least being ignorant of it. And for all the talk of legally changing things, we really have to change us, I would think, first. Us as a culture, as a people. We need to stop looking at politicians just based on who gets the most face exposure, who can pay for the most advertisements, who can just get their name out more. We as a people need to be more discerning. And that's not to put all of the blame on us either. Yes, the corporations have their blame in this being the people buying our politicians. This does not absolve them of that. And the fact that they do this so wantonly without any regard for our actual system is pretty disgusting. The problem becomes, though, a system that allows this to happen. Like, for one instance, we don't have people discussing lobbyists as an issue. We're talking about amending the whole constitution, for God's sake, and we're not even having a full, realistic discussion on what we could do perhaps to limit lobbying. Which is, I think, a much more reasonable angle to approach this issue from than let's just strip all corporations of the ability to do anything like that. Let's, let's talk about our lobbyists and how they have an unfettered access to our politicians. Let's regulate them more. Let, let's keep a better accounting of what they're doing. And one idea that's come from this that I do agree with, because I don't want to just sit here and hee and haw about how everything they're saying is wrong, is let's make all campaign contributions public. That is a good idea. I agree with that fully. If we could have a law in place that said anybody who gives money to a campaign must be known for how much they gave and who they are, yeah, that would be good. That would help. And, you know, if they donate to a super PAC, then that should also be something that is categorized and kept as public record. We should know, as a people, who owns our politicians. I think, at the very least, we have the right to know. But moving further than what that would do is this idea of lobbyists, the people who are buying the politicians, the speakers for the corporations. They need to be regulated much more than they are now. That, I think, would go a long way towards changing this. But in reality, as I said before, it in a big way comes down to us, the people, voting. We do have power. Don't ever forget that. Don't let it be thought that somehow the corporations just completely negate and invalidate everything you could do, and the only way you could have any change is by doing all of this. That's not true. You have a vote. And for all people belittle the voting nowadays, they say, oh, that doesn't change anything. That's because they aren't voting, generally speaking. If everybody, or at least the majority of people, got together and say, yeah, we're outraged about this, and we're outraged enough to one day a year go make a change in a vote. Not that much effort for a lot of change. So I think when we have this discussion about this amending the Constitution option, we should actually pull back and say, well, okay, that's on the table, fine. But... There are many more reasonable and realistic options that could be considered first, because let's all be realistic. You have a greater chance of voting somebody else in that's different than usual than amending the whole Constitution based on a three-quarters referendum for all the states. That's only happened once, by the way, that a three-quarters vote referendum by the people has amended the Constitution. That was to eliminate prohibition on alcohol. Only once did that happen. And I'm not saying it couldn't ever happen, but I'm saying the chances of it happening are pretty unlikely. And you'd have a much greater chance of getting together with all of your friends who agree with you and starting a movement to, let's vote for this guy. This guy seems different. Because when we talk about voting here, we have this paradox that exists, where Congress has one of its lowest approval ratings in history, if not the lowest in history. Yet, we have quite a few people who think their politicians just swell. Like, yeah, Congress sucks, but my guy's in there fighting for change. Well, no, he's a part of Congress. And everybody seems to think that about their guy and nobody else. So pretty much everybody seems to approve of Congress individually, just not as a whole. Which I'm pretty sure, once you look at it, you can see how that's ridiculous. Okay, your guy's great and everybody else sucks. But everybody else thinks that about their guy and they think your guy sucks. 
let's be real here. Everybody's guy sucks. I mean, there's a few exceptions here and there, but for the most part, everybody's guy is a part of Congress. They're all voting to do this shit together. It's not like there's this secret cabal of like six congressmen there who are somehow controlling everything. No, they're all voting on this stuff. They're all a part of this system. This is all about board, and this is why it's a cultural issue. Because at heart, we vote them in. It's us who votes them in. And it, like I noted, that doesn't excuse the other parties of their responsibility in this, but that does not excuse us of our responsibility in this either. To say that it's all the corporation's fault, that it's all their evil, it entirely passes the judgment off of us who voted those people in. And we need to have a look at us, the voting populace, before we talk about changing the whole constitution, because I don't care what laws you pass or what you do, if we haven't changed the culture that tacitly allows these sorts of things to happen without recrimination in the form of voting them out, then we bear the blame too. Just something to think about.